Oh, hey guys, uh, been a few days since I made a video. I spent a couple days up in Elko, Nevada. My daughter uh, begged and pleaded me to come watch a. She shows uh, sheep and goats all over Oregon and Idaho. And this was the first show she's went into Nevada. And um, uh, she did pretty good up there. But anyways, we went up to Elko, Nevada and watched her for a couple days. It was hot up there. It was 105 yesterday when we left. And uh, my wife's got a 2000, what is that, a 17 or 18 F-150. And she tows her stock trailer with that. And believe it or not, that little son of a gun right there, I had never really drove it that much. That's I bought it for her, and that's her pickup. And what that little son, it's got that EcoBoost V6 in it. And that's a running little son of a gun. It just pulls that. That's a two axle stock trailer. It's a pretty heavy old steel trailer. And I mean, it pulls it better than that six liter of mine does. But she had problems one day going over to Medford in it, and it was getting hot on her pulling the trailer, pulling the hills, and it did it to me a couple times yesterday coming back actually more than twice about every hill we hit i had to back out of it um i looked at it it's got electric fans on it and i'm almost certain because we turned the air conditioner off just to do some tests on it while we were driving and it didn't didn't climb up near as high and i told her right then then i got we, we pulled in the winnemucca and got gas and filled it up and I looked and the radiator and the condenser and everything's all plugged up from running across state line road where all the damn grasshoppers are so I think it's just plugged up so I gotta hopefully get Noel's tractor here buttoned up and then um, uh, we'll uh, pull her pickup over here and start blowing and cleaning that out uh, hey girl what are you doing there good looking Josie went with us too Yep, she went to the, she went to the, the, uh, the darn show with us. Yep, she was a good girl. Ah, uh, here we go. Noel sent this valve body. This is the original valve body that came off that tractor. But, uh, once we got it here, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but there's a hell of a gouge down there in that bore. Something went through this valve block. Anyway, it's junk, it's scrap iron. And it's been left outside somewhere and the detent roller and stuff's froze up on scrap iron. I found a new body. Believe, ask, you wanna know what they charge for this? You don't get any, I took the plugs here out of that one and stuck in here, but you don't get any valves. You don't get nothing with this. You just get basically a chunk of aluminum. $2,400, almost $2,500 for that. Yeah, pretty crazy, huh? Anyway, um, I'm gonna start pulling this other valve body out of here. Um, we're gonna need 10, um, grab that. We're gonna need eight millimeter. Do you need something, hon? Do you need something? Do you need something? No. Oh, you're just out here? Okay. Oh! Let's climb under here and start ripping and tearing again. Hopefully, I'm pretty confident that this is probably going to be the last time. This I parked this tractor and it quit moving when I just when I parked it. And, uh... I didn't think it was going to move again, but sure as hell we started it up and I backed it right over here and I shifted all four speeds in the power quad when I backed it over here. So I'm having more confidence now that it'll probably be fine when we get this new valve body. Apparently this valve block here, that this other, I don't know, whoever he had work on it last, they put this valve body on here and it come off a burn up tractor. So that seems to make a lot more sense now as to why I had a... Years ago, I had a 4R100 transmission in a in a uh, 2000 Power Stroke, and I rebuilt the transmission. No, 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 I'm wrong. No, I it was brought to me for this problem. 
well it was sticking a shift valve in the accumulator valve body and every time I I would I could pull the I could pull the valve body off of the transmission and put it on the bench and the valve would be just fine but as soon as you bolted it to the case of the transmission it would stick well long story short finally figured out the case was warped the case was no good in the transmission don't know how that happened but it was warped and uh yeah we put a new case New valve body and it was fine after that okay so I should have brought a screwdriver and a 13 millimeter to take this line off here so what I want to do is put the plug back in it and tighten it up because once I pull the suction line too there'll be a lot of oil coming out there and I just put brand new oil in this thing because I had this valve body off three or four times and I thought man I just I better put new oil in it, you know. I've been dumping it and, you know, I'm doing this outside and every once in a while a leaf off that willow tree will blow in there and you don't know if you're getting a leaf in the stupid transmission. So I thought, let's put some new oil in there. So this is brand new oil on the last go around. I have to follow through with what I've been telling you guys here, so i tell you that when you put a plug in, you tighten it, you know, just go ahead and tighten it. That way you don't forget, because it's just human nature, man. People forget. That was kind of nice getting away for a couple of days. It really was. Letting that one dribble into that one. I got another clean bucket here because these old buddies, it's they're messy doing them. I was gonna say, I thought I brought an extension with me. This thing off there so many times I could almost do it blindfolded. Here's where the mess usually comes. Is try to catch as much of it as you can. Just take the tube and spin it. And just let it kind of drain down into there. Okay. Um. Not as much coming out there as I thought there would be. So, I'll turn it back up. Go ahead. This thing can kind of fight you. Get it out. still wound up wearing some of it I pulled this suction screen the first time that's back in the rear end side of the rear end housing I pulled that out of there and cleaned it 
Okay, uh, five sixteenths or eight millimeter, one of the two. Well, I got darn too ventilated over there, and of course it's still got a little bit of oil. And now it's dripping and running underneath my where I can lay in it. There's a lot of bolts in this thing. All these shift valves and cartridge valves all got to come out and go into the other one. I was thinking for $2,400 that it was going to, you know, you would think you'd get a loaded valve body that was a bolt-on type situation, but nope. Not in today's world. I guess I'd just be thankful that I got one at all. <laughs> I waited a while to get that one. I couldn't find a good one in a salvage yard. Everybody that I talked to, they said, well, this tractor's a burn up tractor. Or I had one outfit clear back. Where in the hell was it at? In Ohio somewhere, some salvage yard. They took it off and at least the guy was kind of honest. He said, I don't really want to sell it to you. He said, we took the valve body off and looked inside of it and it's just, full of dirt and rust and he said I just don't it's been sitting here a long time and he said it's been open some he said somebody had had this front one of this front cover so whoever somebody pulled the front cover off that transmission and then covered it up and of course it the cab was gone because they sold the cab off the tractor and of course they had the floor plate and stuff out so anything that came in just went right into the transmission and just screwed that valve body up you know he said he wasn't too happy. He said he'd like to find out who pulled that all apart and left it open. The guy said, he said, damn it. He goes, he says, we're a salvage yard. This is where we make our money is selling these parts. And he said, if my guys open something up and, and let it get ruined, he said, we lost all that revenue of something we could have sold. He said, so I'm not very happy about this situation. <laughs> And somebody will probably make a comment on the comment section. Well, they just don't pay them guys enough. It's a wage gap problem. Shut up, moron. The gap is between your ears. That's the problem. Everybody thinks they deserve 70 or $80 an hour to do a task that has no skill in it. You know, that, that's, that's the problem with a lot of these Americans. If you want to learn how to do better and make more money, then go develop a skill that's in, in, in a demand, you know? You think that because you're flipping hamburgers, you deserve $30 an hour. And I can understand on the other hand as well that everything has gone up around you, you know, to where you can't, you can't make it. I understand that. Uh, too, but it's going to... It's going to be pretty soon to where all of us are going to have trouble making a living. That's that's the way it's going to go. That's the way it's happening right now as we speak, actually. Try to keep from dropping them in the bucket as I take them out. I think two of them I had to actually take them out with a stupid end wrench to even get them out. I couldn't get my impact on them.
And yeah, I understand some, and, and it might get that way for all of us when the inflation gets so high that you can't, right now, me, everybody's been raising their rates steadily since this whole COVID bullshit. I mean, you don't have a choice with the inflation and everything going up and the money being worth less all the time. You have to raise your rates. Pretty soon it gets to a point to where nobody can afford to do anything. But the collapse of this place would be the best thing that ever happened to it. This fake screwed up monetary system that we're all under, which is all fiat, propped up fake bullshit. That'll be good when it all goes away. And start trying to reestablish ourselves. It's going to take a long time to do it, but it's going to, you know, to sa to establish a sound financial uh, situation for our country. You know, they're going to try to implement their central bank digital currency. Once, if they implement that and they get it pushed through, all I can say is, people, is you better wake up. Because you want to talk about the ultimate form of control. They're already doing it in China. They've been doing it for years in China. And that's what they're modeling this after. Is the Chinese government. They're modeling it right after them. Those Chinese people, their money expires. You won't be able to save money anymore. And just think about it. If you say the wrong thing on social media. Or you vote for the wrong person or the wrong candidate and your social credit score isn't acceptable then they take your money away that's what they do over there in china and that's what they want to do here and look what trudeau's doing it trudeau's trying to do it to the canadian people right now so you know quit being so damn docile and i wish the damn people would start getting together and figuring out what they're going to do about this problem you know because nobody's there's no queuing on None of that. Nobody's coming to save you. It's it's up to you. It's up to us to save ourselves. That whole QAnon thing was intentionally done as a psyop was intentionally done as a psyop to make everybody sit on their ass waiting for someone else to save them while they took everything from you and totally wrecked the entire country and took every freedom that you ever had away. That's what the QAnon thing's all about, is making you docile. I'll probably get visited by the FBI now, but oh well. Here I am. You can Ruby Ridge me, you son of a bitch. Okay, I gotta get those two out with an inner inch. I'm not gonna be able to do much else with those. different this one doesn't see how this one has this big protrusion here 
This one does not. Which I don't think it makes any difference, but as long as the recess is there for the O-ring box O-ring. Let's just go like this because it was sticking that direction. Try not to do it without scratching the spool. This one is not sticking. That other one always stuck right down here. We haven't bolted it up yet either though. So that's what's going to tell you all right there is when you bolt it up. I need my Allen set here. valve body this is the only area that has this discoloration in it right in here and imagine that that's right where the spool is sticking you see that discoloration that's nowhere else on this valve body but right in this area it's kind of interesting Another one that I'll be glad to put behind me, I'll tell you that. It was 105 degrees there yesterday in Elko, Nevada, where when we left, it was hot, really hot. So my tractor fits through there. Your pickup should back through there. I mean, the tractor fits through there with the rototiller and everything on. I would think that would fit through there. Okay. Yes. Yes, that's what I am currently trying to attempt here. Did you get the wiring figured out? Yep, all the wiring's fixed. I just got to get this spool that kept sticking on me. Which it looks like so far that's going to solve the problem because it's not sticking in this one. In the new valve body? Yeah, it's not sticking in this one. Okay. Cool. That's plate assembly out of here. That's got its own gasket on it. That gasket looks just fine. Okay, this this is your uh, uh, your pressure switch for your enable solenoid, if I remember correctly. I may not be remembering correctly, but can we get it out with our Nipex pliers? Where is that? What am I looking at here? Oh, I cut the valve body. Wrong way, yet. dummy. Oh, let's see. If I go like this, yeah. Those 
come out of there. Okay, let's try to maybe do these so things don't get mixed up here. Let's try to maybe do these one at a time. Make sure the O-rings and all that stuff look good. Yeah, and then let's put the little plate on there with the valve, or the, this, this basically just a retaining plate here that holds those valves in there. And I'll probably, I'll put this bolt in there that holds all this, no it's this one here. It basically just captures this. I won't tighten it up yet because I need to put all the, make sure all the other holes that line up, the mother valve or other bolts. Okay, so now we can put our enable switch back in there. It senses the pressure on the hydraulic circuit to enable the shift valves is what it does. out of here it's not really wanting to come out of there uh, that spool would be tucked back in here okay so how are we going to get that one out of there oh it has a clip in there? What is that? What am I seeing there? No. No clip. Where's the spring at and what's holding it? Huh. Not really understanding what's holding this thing well I'm having a hell of a time here this one here I got it out and I, it bent it bent the spool it was coming out so hard these two here were the same way they came out hard I, th this one here I actually pulled this one out of this valve body which I'm actually in the process of pulling these other ones out Once I got the this one free here from where it was just kind of stuck from sitting here, it came right out. Which it kind of looks like maybe this one might do the same. These are coming out way better. Once I get it initially broke loose from it just sitting where it's been sitting, I can tell you right now, now that I'm running through this experience with that other valve body, that valve body is absolute garbage. That is what's causing all the problems. They put a warped valve body off a burn-up tractor on there is what they did. Caused all these problems with these valves sticking. Yeah. And then the O-ring on the end, well here's that, sp here's the spool right here. You can see the O-ring's gone. Okay, so I want to put this one. I don't like it. These two here came out really hard too, and I don't like it. So we're gonna pop them back out of there. Um, Let's 
So let's let's pop these back up, these two, because I mean the first one, man, I heck a heck of a time getting it out of there. So let's pop this one out. I don't like it. Trying to go easy here. Yeah, they, these spools are tweaked from trying to get them out of there because the, that that whole valve body is warped, so nothing's coming apart correctly. It is dark garbage. It's scrap iron. That valve body is. I can't believe how easily those spools bent when I pulled them out. Straight. Yeah, look how yeah. Look how easy that goes in there in comparison to the way that other one come out of there. Okay, where did the puck go? Oh, right here. Alright, so this one here. I'm gonna change it, and uh, yeah, uh, I think this thing's gonna be like a new tractor when we get done. Really do because of this valve body issues that uh, seems to be plaguing this thing. <laughs> I I I'm not trying to run these guys down, but I just one of those things. I never ever put anything off a salvage yard from a burnt tractor as a main component like this just not a good idea just not a good idea okay I got it kind of broke loose what I did is squirt some penetrating oil they took this valve body off and this off the this is the original one off the tractor, and I guess it looks like they kind of left it laying outside. And I had to stick a pick back in there. There it goes. Trying to be as careful as possible. When they were coming out hard, I was like, man, I'm going to be held up even another day or two waiting on valves for this. And I thought, huh? Let's try, go try these out of this one. Pretty confident that we're going to be just fine now. These are coming out so much better than them other ones did. Way better. I am pretty confident we'll be just fine now. Okay, I'm going to lay that one right up there on that clean towel. And dig this one out. Just know I'll, if, if I if I take a chance and put those ones that are going in real hard like that in there, they'll stick and they'll hang up, and we'll be into it again. And we only want to. I really, really, really want to do this one last time. I gotta go get my screwdrivers. This one here 
might be alright. You know, I didn't. It didn't seem to be near as problematic getting it out as the other ones. But I'm going to change it. I mean, just, what a difference, huh? What a difference. Oh, I guess I probably ought to put the return spring back in there for the spool, huh? Might be a good idea. What do you think? Okay. Um, Got to get the main... Um, shift, you know, this is your, actually your shift valve right here, the speed selection. Huh, why aren't you coming out of there, man? Not being very friendly with me. Huh? What the hell's going on with that thing, huh? Why oh, it's being so hard to come off of there? If I can get this hook in there and then there we go, gee whiz. Mr. Hard Ash, huh? mixed up okay so why are you not coming out of there are you going to be a problem too are you going to be a problem too Everything's coming out hard on this valve body. Yeah, this thing's a piece of shit. Oh. about this one either. Man, that ain't... <laughs> that ain't good, is it? Man! Hey! Hey! Knock it off! Josie, you frickin' maniac! Here's the one out of this other valve body. Man, I just, I don't trust that thing. I really don't. That thing's been sitting outside for years and it come out easier than that damn thing did. glad Noel sent this other valve body now. First I thought it was a waste of time, but now it's acting like it might pay off. <laughs> because I'll tell you what, I think that other valve body is just completely trashed and ruined. Okay. Um, the only valve, I gotta get the detent out, gotta get this out, whoa, 
Are you kidding me? Let's see. Well, I got it kind of on there. I don't have all the bolts in there torque anything now. It's got a couple bolts holding it. What I, what I do on these is <laughs> just through experiences. Oh, shoot. Hang on. Gotta get the next size up. Four millimeter, maybe. I pull that little Allen plug out of there, and uh, that way a guy can tell to make sure that his shift lever is lined up with the spool. What I do is pull this little Allen plug out right here. that size it's, it's four millimeter and what I do is I stick a pickup in there and then I just grab the shift linkage up here and move it and then see if it kind of you know you'll, you'll feel it you'll feel the spool moving with your, with your pick Yep, she's moving. Okay, so I'm 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 happy. That that means it's lined up. That it caught it. I've put one of these before and missed it and took off and the tractor only had first gear and it wouldn't shift into the other three gears on the power quad and I didn't get that lined up right. And I had to drain the oil all back out of it and pull it loose again. I hate for him to go through all this damn trouble, this fixing the wiring and the valve body and then running a thousand hours and the damn transmission starts slipping or something, you know? That's what scares me about doing jobs like this. It's, you feel bad for your customer. It's, it's an old tractor. It's got a lot of hours on it. I don't, these, but the thing I do like about these tractors is they're easy to fix. I don't, to me they are. Other people say they're not. The, the mechanical reversers were way better set up than these electric, electric reversers were with these cartridge valves on here. So if you're going to get one of these and you're seeing one at an auction, 6410, 6400, get the mechanical reverser. Just less stuff to go wrong, you know. Let's see how the tube with the copper washers were right here in the middle there's two with copper washers so you got to kind of watch watch those i've got to find the other one with the copper washer it's a long bolt but... <sighs> you, you'll know see it goes in that hole right there it's too, that bolt's too short. No copper on that one. And I'll just kind of run them up with the impact wrench. And then get the torque wrench out and tor torque them all down to 11 foot pounds, which is what is that, 132 inch pounds? My math right? Yeah, I think so. 12 times 12 is 144. Yeah, 132 inch pounds. Why is that one there being ornery? Kind of being a little bit ornery with me. Well, I'll get this torque down, guys. Uh, We'll put all this back together and we'll dump the oil in it and uh well I'm, I'm pretty confident that she should shift like a dream well should we go i pulled it ahead there to get my tools picked up uh well god hates a coward huh let's start out in b range 
power quad down there on first. Ford, the shuttle shift. Okay, so far so good. First, second, third, fourth. Downshift, third, second, first. Oh, yeah. I'll drive around out here in the pasture. Yeah, little goaties. Downshift. Farthest it's ever gone since I've had it. Let's get out here and let's go to reverse and see how much we got for reverse, you know, on the power shift. All four gears and four in reverse. Okay, let's go to C range. Let's go forward. Okay, so that's C range. We got C range. Let's try D. Um, this is going to really labor. Okay, so we got all four gears in all ranges. I haven't tried A, but... codes in the reverser control unit. And, uh, which I don't really suspect there will be. Everything's working. Now, we got this thing, man. We got the transmission working. Here's what, here's, here's what test it, though. But you know, when it was screwing up last time, it would start getting sluggish and not really wanting to go. And then you'd shut it off and it wouldn't restart.
folks so it's been a long go around with this thing it had a bad start relay on it it had two bad relays i can't even remember the enable relay and like the reverse relay were bad the wiring going over here going to the reverser control unit to all the solenoids this connector was bad and all green and corroded and causing all kinds of problems it had a bad neutral safety switch and the valve body was junk so anyways uh i just all i got left to do is i got to put the floor pan and stuff back in it and the floor mat and then he wants the air conditioner charged which i cannot do because i used the rest of my refrigerant on kevin's truck this morning so i got to go to i got to go uh give an arm and a leg and buy another couple bottles of that stuff anyhow we got this one dicked <laughs>